Minister, last year we had an absolutely dire student accommodation crisis uh, to the point where many, many students were paying up to €400 Euro a night, uh, uh, sorry, a week for hotel accommodation, and some couldn't even get that. Um, so what is going to be different? Are we going to face, because certainly student union, union leaders believe we're going to face the same student accommodation crisis this year uh, as last year. What have you done or what are you going to do to prevent that from happening? Deputy Boyd Barrett for, for raising this important matter, which we um, happy to engage on. The Government's Housing for All plan contains a detailed and comprehensive series of actions to substantially increase supply of all types of housing and accommodation, including student accommodation. I think it's sometimes hard to decouple the issues that students face in relation to accommodation from the broader uh, housing issue. That's why I reference housing for all. It is the largest housing budget in the history of the state. There is a 20 billion budget. Uh, I, just, I have been extensively engaging uh, with, my own, with my own department, obviously, on this, but also with the Minister for Housing and his department, as well as the higher education sector, student representative groups uh, and other stakeholders. I chaired a meeting of all higher education institutions and the Union of Students of Ireland uh, in very recent weeks, again, uh, to further pursue this issue. I I've responded with all chairs uh, and presidents uh, in relation to this at least twice this year um, regarding, the, uh, regarding the issues and what we can do uh, to try and resolve it. As I said to Deputy Conway Walsh earlier, we do approach this new academic year, um, I think, with two, with two different realities. One, we, we're approaching the year with about 600 additional student accommodation uh, beds. Uh, and secondly, I hope we're approaching the year in which we can begin to get back up the rent-a-room scheme. Um, which I think really did fall off a cliff during the COVID, the height of the COVID uh, pandemic. There, I think the two most immediate avenues we can be pursuing, in addition to those 600 beds, there's another 674 due to come on board during the academic year in Galway, and I'm informed of that by, by, by NUI Galway. The bigger piece that I'm genuinely working intensively on is to try and put a new model in place uh, to deliver student accommodation. I'm saying it openly, I'm saying it bluntly, I do think that will require public subvention, state subvention, to bridge what is, seems to be that the market failure challenge that universities and colleges are experiencing at the moment. There will have to be an affordability conversation in return for any subvention uh, made by the state. We do have a pipeline, though, in our sector of an awful lot of planning permissions for student accommodation, college-owned, that could be built if we can, if we can unleash this. Uh, and I'm engaging with the Cabinet Committee on Housing uh, on this matter uh, next week, I think on Monday. Well, look, the cheapest student accommodation out in UCD is over €8,000 for the college term. Uh, the new student accommodation that's going to be provided out there is €14,000 a year. Right? That is just insanity uh, and not acceptable. And to be honest, the government uh, should intervene immediately uh, to ensure that students and their families are not being screwed with that levels of, of uh, rent. And as I said, as a temporary stopgap, not that I'm a fan of housing assistance payment, but people shouldn't be paying that level of uh, rent. Personally, I'd be for nationalising all this privately built, investor built uh, student accommodation. They're getting tax breaks, they're charging €1,000 a month, uh, which most students can't afford. Um, and, of course, then we need the bigger piece of uh, major investment in providing student accommodation that is affordable on campus or near, uh, near campus. So, yeah, I, look, I think there's, there's four things um, we need to do here. Uh, the first is we need to have a flexible local approach. So we need to say, and by the way, not that we need to say, we have said several times to any higher education institution in any part of the country that has a local solution. So if there's something you can do on your campus, near your campus, if there's a building you can convert, we want to hear from you and we will provide assistance in making that happen. There's been one example of where this has happened actually in, in Mr. Collins' area in Limerick, uh, where the Technological University, I believe, down there worked with the local authority down there to deliver a, a, a local solution. Second thing I think we do need to do, and I've discussed this with students, is, is the rent-a-room scheme. People can, if they have a spare room, earn 14 grand uh, tax-free while renting out a room. That is a scheme that has traditionally worked well. I accept USI want assurance around the protection for students in what they call digs, and, and I think that's a, it's a valid issue. The third is the borrowing framework. We have provided clarity, legal clarity now, the technological universities, the former institutes of technology, indeed, one out in your own constituency, for the first time now, can actually borrow to build. 
on the fourth is this new model, which I do believe will require an intervention from the state to unleash what is the potential to build many thousands of on-campus college-owned student accommodation units. The problem is if the onus is put into college rather than the government making a decision, we have to have the necessary student accommodation to forward a student accommodation crisis and to make it affordable, then you get what you're getting out in UCD, 14,000 a year, right? Uh, and by the way, here's a suggestion. I've made it to the Minister for Housing more generally. He hasn't taken it up. There's a building sitting down, the Seamark building, opposite the Marion Gates, which is about six storeys, and it's been sitting empty for 10 years, right? Beside the Marion Gates. Uh, buy it and refurbish it for student accommodation. Uh, but, we, we, I mean, there's nothing you've really said that suggests to me that we're not going to face the major problems that we're facing again this year. And what do you say, and do you agree with me, that, that, that although HAP is not an ideal scheme by any means compared to the direct provision of student accommodation or any form of accommodation, that at least we should be bringing down the rents to affordable levels uh, that are being provided for our students by providing subsidies such as a housing assistant payment? Deputy Boyd Barrett, I think your HAP idea certainly merits consideration, and I'm not going to rule it out. Uh, it's not a policy intervention within my direct department, but let me reflect on it and talk to uh, relevant ministers in relation to that as well.